Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, Felicia here. Before we start the show, I want you to do me a quick favor. Can you hit that like button? Can you hit that subscribe button? Can you leave me a written review? If you've been listening to this show, you love this show. If you've had a coaching session with me and you rocking with me and this show has helped you, please let the people know. Please, please, please write a review. This helps other people know about the show. Also, go share this with somebody. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Because I'm telling you, like even in today's episode, gems are about to be dropped. Don't hoard the gems. Share. The more gems you share, the more gems you'll get. It's the law of the universe. Okay? All right. Now let's start the show. Welcome to the Trill and BA show. I'm your host, Felicia Ann Rose, a new ha, aka the trillest MBA you will ever know. And I'm here to help you survive and thrive in corporate America by giving you the truth and being as real as only I can be. Sunday, everybody. Welcome back to the show in studio. Hey, we got the studio. Listen, I am so excited, you guys. It's, it's all coming together. God is good. We're going to give God his glory. I have a great episode for you guys today. I'm going to talk about mid-year objectives. The title of this episode is Your Goals, Your Growth, Successfully Updating Your Objectives Mid-Year. So listen, guys, it's the middle of the year. Some things to take note of. It's about to be Juneteenth soon. So we celebrating that. I don't care about the BS and federal holiday or whatever. We know what it is and we're going to do what we've been doing the whole time. Okay. Okay. Now, We've got Pride. Shout out to all my LGBTQIA plus brothers and sisters and peoples. Love y'all. So shout out to all y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with the show. I say y'all, but it's us. Like, I don't care if you're straight, if you're gay, if you're somewhere in between questioning, you don't know. We are all one collective body of humanity. And so we're going to celebrate with our fellow humans and celebrate their life and love and choices because everybody deserves to be celebrated. Okay, so that and my favorite, it is Black Music History Month. So shout out to all the people in the music industry, all the people who listen to music on the way to work. You know how we do. You know what we listen to on the way to work. That's our little secret. They don't need to know. We got our hype songs. It's all good. So Just want to say, hey, we in the swing of June, almost halfway through the year. We're going to be outside. We're going to be outside, okay? Because it's getting warm. It's going to be nice in a lot of places. And we're going to have a good time. But in the midst of that good time is why we got to talk today. Because we can have a good time, but we got to work hard and play hard. And so this is to make sure that you stay on track with the work you need to be doing to make sure you finish the year strong and you meet all of your objectives and you also exceed some of those objectives as well. So let's get right into it, guys. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is we have to take a very tactical approach to our mid-year reviews, our annual objectives, making sure that we're on track, right? But the first thing you got to do before you do anything else is you got to sit, okay? You got to sit with yourself and you got to do some self-reflection. Because listen, guys, let me tell you something. If you think you're doing a good job, but your manager don't think you're doing a good job, you're going to have some problems, okay? And so you have to sit and really get honest about what you should start doing, what you should stop doing, and what you should continue to do, okay? So now that self-reflection is so important. And 
understand it's not about doubting yourself. It's not about questioning whether you're good enough or, you know, focusing on where you might have fucked up. Like, that's not what this is about. Okay. This is really about recognizing your achievements, number one, understanding what roadblocks you may be experiencing and really getting clear about that and articulating that or preparing to articulate that. And then understanding what is next. What do you want to do next? What you're working on now, does that set you up for success in your next role? So this is a perfect time. If you are having to go back into the office, this is a perfect time where it's a little bit quieter around the office, or maybe you have a few less meetings because people are starting to take vacation. The kids are out of school. So, you know, summer Fridays are pretty much in full effect. Like this is the time for you to block off that time on your calendar to do this work. And it starts with self-reflection. Okay, so now you've got your annual objectives, but let's be honest, shit changes. What you said you were going to do, what you aligned with your manager to, that's all fine and dandy, but does it still hold true today? Because I'm going to tell you something. We have experienced inflation out the wazoo. Every company has been affected by it. There have been short-term decisions that have been made over the past six months that probably affected what the organization needed you to accomplish for the year. And so you've got to sit and think through big picture. Has the strategy changed, adjusted? What does that mean for the objectives that you have set with your manager for the year, right? You got to think through that because business goals will shift, right? And then also you grow personally. Maybe there's some things that happened and maybe you were pulled off a project because it was like, oh, you know what, Felicia, you're really good at this and we have an immediate need. So we need you to forget that we're deprioritizing that and we're going to prioritize this. And that over there, that ain't on your objective bingo card at all. (laughs) And you've been working on that for the last four months, right? So you got to understand, or maybe your team evolved. Maybe three people quit and now you're having to pick up their work because (laughs) it's us. (laughs) And you know how they do us. (laughs) You ever notice how when a black woman leaves the organization, they go hire four or five more people (laughs) to fill her place. Is that just me? Oh, you haven't experienced that? Mm, Keep living. Because I guarantee you, I know not one Black woman in corporate America that I know personally that is not doing the job of two or three people right now. Like, real talk. We be laboring, but I got y'all. We're going to make that work for us, right? So now let's discuss how to revise these objectives. So I know you've heard of SMART objectives and your objectives should have been written as SMART goals. However, comma, a lot of times people take shortcuts and we just write anything. We got to hurry up and get something in the system and all that and blah, blah, blah. If that happened to you, this is the time to double back and get very specific on what it is you owe the organization, the reason they're paying you, why you're spending your time there. It needs to be SMART goals. So SMART, it needs to be specific. You need to be able to measure it. It should be something you can actually achieve. So none of this, you know, it's a stretch goal. We're going to learn from it. No, none of your objectives should be that way. They need to be relevant to the business goals, okay? To the overarching business goals. They need to be relevant and they need to be time-bound. It needs to be something that you can actually accomplish before the end of the year. If you have a goal that's a long-term goal that's going to take you beyond your end-of-year review, whatever your fiscal year is, you really need to sit with your manager and say, okay, but how do I show that I added value? Like, what's the cutoff here? What's to prove that I actually did a great job, that I exceeded expectations? And that really needs to play itself out. So when you go back and you revisit 
your goals and something's changed, right? What you're going to do is make sure that at the end of the year, everything you were supposed to achieve, that you achieved it, right? So that's where the time bound comes in. It has to be things you can do before the end of your fiscal year and before you have your evaluation period for your whole year review, whatever that process is. And so something you need to remember, it is vital to document all of this. It's vital to document conversation with your manager. It is vital to keep a record of your progress. So every month you should really be doing the self-reflection and say, okay, how am I tracking? You should be meeting with your manager at least once a month to talk about how you're tracking your progress and not just like getting things done, but also how are you getting things done? You always want to ask your manager, I know I'm getting things done, but can you give me some feedback on the how? Is there anything I should start doing? Is there anything I should stop doing? And are there things that I should always continue to do? So it's the start, stop, continue framework for feedback. You need to ask your manager that, okay? And understand this all will help you understand and see where you've been, where you're going. And it's also very powerful evidence in discussing and proving your case as to why you should, you know, get a good rating, get a promotion, get the next role that you're looking to get in the organization. So it's controlling your narrative, but on paper. This is why this step in the middle of the year is so important. You don't want to skip it. I know it's fun outside. You can go outside, but do your work first, okay? You got to understand this being in a company, in a company where you have this process, this is like being in a relationship, but you're in a relationship with yourself, right? And sometimes you need to just have a heart to heart with your actual goals. So the biggest takeaway I can give you in this segment is to do a little self-reflection, take some TLC. If the year hasn't been great, you know, give yourself grace. It's going to be okay. But let's figure out if you need to turn around, you have six months to turn this thing around and come out the victor. You just have to get very clear on what you can do what's not going to make it to the end of the year. And then we're going to talk about coming up, how you align all this with your manager. Okay. Because you have to be in sync with the job because that helps everything grow. You grow, the company grows. It's a win-win. Okay. So that when we get back from the break, we're going to talk about how you navigate this formal process, because you got to understand there's the formal process before you talk to your manager, all the check boxes you need to do, and then there's the discussion with your manager. So we're going to talk about the receipts that you need to keep when we get back from the break. Hey there, travel enthusiasts. Are you tired of struggling to find hair and skincare products to cater to your unique needs while on the go? Look no further than blacktravelbox.com. Black Travel Box is your one-stop shop for travel-sized natural hair and skincare products, specifically curated for Black travelers. No more settling for generic products that don't work for your hair type or skin tone. Whether you're jet setting to a tropical island or embarking on a cross-country road trip, Black Travel Box has you covered with their convenient and TSA-approved travel kit. Plus, by supporting Black Travel Box, you're not just getting high quality products, but you're also supporting a black owned business that is dedicated to promoting inclusivity in the travel industry. So travel in confidence, style, and grace with Black Travel Box. Visit blacktravelbox.com now and get ready to slay your next trip. Don't let your beauty routine suffer while you explore the world. And hey guys, let me tell you, Black Travel Box products are amazing, especially that body butter. Listen, I got a promo code for you. Use the code JETSET, that's J-E-T-S-E-T, all caps, JETSET. And you can get a discount from Black Travel Box because of who? The Trillist NBA. Happy travels, beautiful people. Now, let's get back to the show. 
Okay, guys, and we are back. Black Travel Box is everything, guys. Go get it, okay? Okay. Now, let's now talk about after you've done your self-reflection, you've looked and you've analyzed like where you are with your goals, how far you are, are you going to make it? Which ones are you going to make? Which ones ain't going to make it? Mostly because the company changed shit up on you and now you're trying to figure this out. Never. Never. Never, okay? I don't care. Never agree to do your old goals and new goals mid-year. That's not fair to you, and that ain't cool. And that's setting you up for failure. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. If you get a new objective, you got to take an objective away, okay? But let's talk about what the process is, the formality So many of you have some sort of system that your company uses, some type of talent management where you put your profile in. If you go in there, you can see your old job reviews. You can see, you know, your old ratings. You can see, you know, your profile What other people see if they're looking to poach you from another team internally. That system, whatever that system is for your company, your objectives live in that system. So number one, make sure you pay attention to any deadlines, anything that needs to happen between you and your manager. If your manager is supposed to put comments, oh, this is a pro tip, y'all. If your manager is supposed to give comments, write out a draft of comments and give it to your manager. Say, hey, I know you're busy. This is what I'm thinking as far as the input for the end of year in the system. Let me know your thoughts, right? Listen, let me tell you something, game changer. Most managers are lazy. And they're not lazy because they're actually lazy. They're lazy because they got other shit to do. They have their job too. Like they got to manage you, but then they also got to do whatever their boss is expecting them to do. They got objectives too, right? They got projects too. Most managers are player coaches. So they're in the game with you. They're not just overseers and overlords and delegating everything to you, at least not the halfway decent ones. Now, there are some mediocre mics out there, okay? Oh, did someone say my name? And we hope that they exit the organization. We do. hmm yeah. So at the end of the day, guys, you just really need to understand your company's procedures and make sure you meet all the deadlines. The other thing, during this time, it's really a cool time for you to, quote unquote, make friends with HR. Mm -hmm. Now understand, HR is not our friend, okay? We want HR to be a friend to us. In kind, we'll be very kind and loving to HR, right? And I love all my HR friends. They be mad at me sometimes (laughs) because I be saying like, don't go to HR. (laughs) HR can't help you. Here's the deal. Don't go to HR with complaints because that gets you nowhere. And I will keep saying that over and over again. You'll hear me say that over and over. If you listen to this podcast consistently, you're always going to hear me say that. Do not go to HR with complaints. You only go to HR when you need to understand process, policy, and procedure. Three Ps, process, policy, and procedure. Because guess who knows all the processes, all the policies, and all the procedures? It's your HR business partner, your handy-dandy local Lovely HR business partner, sometimes a dude, most of the time a woman, (laughs) like, and they're delightful. That's all you really need them for, to understand process, policy, and procedure, okay? Don't go complaining to HR. If you got a problem, you got to man up and you got to figure out what's the right language to use. Hint, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, (laughs) my favorite go-to. And you got to figure out how to manage conversations and influence. So if you struggle with that, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Love it. All right, guys. So listen, the other thing that's really important as you prepare to have this conversation with your manager, because that's what I'm gearing up to, is a conversation with your manager. (laughs) Documentation. Listen, documentation beats conversation every day of the week, especially in court. 
Now, here's my personal philosophy about managing career. I always stay lawyered up. Y'all know who my attorney is. Shout out attorney Anitra. Anitra K. Brown. She is the bomb.com. I keep her on speed dial when I'm working corporate jobs because shenanigans. But with having an employment attorney on your side, you have to help them help you. And how you do that is you document. You document everything, okay? Your objectives is another form of documentation. So before you have this conversation with your manager, you need to pull out all the notes that you took when you first set the objectives, what, everything, who said what, when, where, and why, okay? And you prepare with all these records, okay? So you should have all this in writing and email and something. You should have sent an email back, say, hey, I just want to make sure you were aligned to these objectives before I put them in the system. That should always be an email that you have at the ready, okay? Okay. Now, y'all know how we love to keep receipts, right? So the same thing goes for our revised goals. As we're revising these goals, you need to understand the rules of the game. You need to play this game. And then you need to make sure that every change that's going to happen or you're going to suggest, you just have it in writing. There's no room for, oh, I thought that you said, or you said here. There's no room for that here, okay? You said on Wednesday, June the 14th at 2 p.m. when we met over Teams that I was responsible for X, Y, and Z and that I was supposed to deliver ABC by the end of the year and that I had these many months, this much time because this laddered into the company's overarching goal of LMNOP, right? Like, Make sure that you have that on paper. All right, guys. So we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to pay some bills. And when we get back from the break, not only am I going to tell you how to prepare for this mid-year objective conversation with your manager, I'm also going to tell you what the most important thing is from this episode when we get back. Hey, guys, it's Felicia here. If you're watching this, that means you are a Patreon member because we are recording exclusive content for our Patreon. So right now, all video, well, except for when we have Van on, we're going to put that out for the world on YouTube. But all video in the studio, my solo episodes, any special messages I have, we're going to put that on Patreon. So join us on Patreon. And if you were a Patreon before and you left an exit interview and you said, I thought I was going to have more content than this. I'm not happy with you, Felicia. I'm going to stop giving you my money. I want you to revisit. I'm going to send you an email and give you some free months of Patreon because you were rocking with us and you deserve to cancel. Like, I own it. I own it, but I want to make it right. So... We're gearing up, as you can see. Thanks for coming. We're happy to have you. If you are listening to this on any of your podcast players on the audio, if you join Patreon, you get to see all what's happening and all the good things. And also, I'll be recording some video coaching tips from me to you on Patreon. We're going to come up with some guides from previous episodes, make it real quick and simple, some checklists, some good things, all that stuff. So we'll share some things with the freebies. If you join our freebie mailing list, that's at trillionba.com. But if you join the Patreon, I'm going to get you the good stuff that helps you get what? Paid and promoted. Paid and promoted. Paid and promoted. Because that's what we do over here. We get paid. We get promoted. Then we get paid. Then we get promoted. And we get paid. And we get promoted. That's what we doing over here. So if you're struggling in corporate, you feel like you don't know why you're there. What are you doing? Like, come on over here to this Patreon. We're going to build this community up. And we're definitely, you know, increasing bags. Because why do we go to work? <laughs> to make money. <laughs> so we can eat and go on nice vacations. At least that's why I go to work. So anyway, guys, love you. Appreciate y'all. Check out our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash show. 
and let's get back to the show and wrap this baby up. All right, guys, and we are back. I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick, guys, because this one is real easy. You are going to prepare to have a conversation with your manager, okay? You have to get your manager's alignment on your revised objectives mid-year. If you're revising your objectives, you also want to drive home what help you need to make sure you meet and exceed your objectives by the end of the year. So I don't care if you don't like this person. I don't care if this some bitch ass, bitchity bitch. You are going to meet with them, okay? You're going to meet with them and you're going to talk through and you're going to understand what the narrative is around the objectives you set. How are you going to change it? How the organization is going to change from their perspective. You're going to gain that understanding, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a crucial step. Conversation is key. And you need to come prepared. All the things that I said do in this episode, you have to do all those things before you meet with your manager. So you come with your receipts. You come with your self-reflection. You come with your proposed revisions to the objectives. You come with making sure, hey, these are smart objectives. Let me show you how they're smart objectives, right? You come with all that, all your talking points. It's very clear. For this meeting, you set it up, okay? You set up the meeting, make sure it's at least 45 minutes. It should be 45 minutes to an hour because this is your career we're talking about. The other thing is you need to create the agenda, right? And make sure that you let your manager know that you'll be asking for some feedback and that this is about your mid-year objectives, okay? So no blindsiding. And don't make this meeting one week before. Like, Make sure you understand when is this shit due in the system and then make sure you give enough time to have this meeting align and get this stuff done by the due date. They'll have HR chasing after you. How you make friends with HR? Meet your company process deadlines for shit like this, okay? Like, don't be late on that stuff because they're the ones that have to, like, herd the cats and that shit's annoying. You know it, I know it. Let's do right by the HR people. So here's the thing that might happen when you meet with your manager. You may want to change your objectives in a certain way because you're trying to set yourself up for success. But maybe your manager is either one, an asshole, or two, just a stickler for like what they deem is the rules, right? Okay, fine. Have the conversation though and make sure that you can stand up for yourself or you can you know, state your position but you don't want to get defensive. This meeting is not the time to get defensive. In fact, none of these meetings are the time to get defensive. Getting defensive will not help you. What you need to do is you need to say, okay, help me understand why you don't want to remove this objective in lieu of this objective. Help me understand how you believe I'm going to get all of this accomplished by the end of the year. Okay, help me understand if there's any help that you have for me because I'm going to need some help if you want me to do all of these things before the end of the year. Like you need to say those things, but also instead of getting defensive, ask questions. Asking questions is the best defense that you can have. And so when you're dealing with pushback, you need to think through how you're going to negotiate this process. And again, how to win friends and influence people, guys. <laughs> this book will help give you the language to push back. But just know you got this, right? And finally, once your objectives have been updated, it's time to follow up. You want to keep track of your progress regularly and keep your manager looped in. Because they're supposed to be there to support you whether they like it or not, okay? And so making sure you have that proactive, regular communication about where you are with your objectives throughout the rest of the year is going to be key to getting that exceeds expectations instead of just met expectations. Now, 
When it's time to talk with your manager, put your game face on, get your shit tight, okay? Talking points clear, agenda set. Didn't blindside him or her, right? And remember, this is your career. So you have the power, right? Like, it's up to you to decide where you want to go in this organization or in another organization. (laughs) It's up to you to say, here's what I need from the organization in order to be successful. The oyster really is yours to open, to eat, to have. All the thing, the pearl in there too. It's all yours. You just have to take it. Okay? So that's the most important thing that you need to know. So listen, (laughs) the most important thing that you need to take away from this episode is that you have the power to set yourself up for success, but you have to do the work. So it starts with a little self-reflection. And then it's understanding the process at your company, like the formal, like how do we manage this process and objectives? When do managers get together and calibrate talent? That usually happens around the midway point of the year to understanding what your manager's perception is of you. And if you've been listening to the show, then you know how to manage your perception with your manager right? Making sure that's on track. And then aligning, having that conversation, that prepared conversation with your manager, aligning to what the goal should be so that you are successful at the end of the year, because we're going for what exceeds expectations. Okay. So guys, if you have a problem or situation at work, if you are struggling to figure out what that conversation is with your manager, right? Like, how do I talk to this person? Especially if it's somebody that mm, you don't like <laughs> or y'all don't get along. Feel free to hit me up. Go to trillmba.com slash coaching and schedule a 45 minute consultation with me. And I will help you strategize and walk through your specific work situation. So if you are struggling to figure out how to come out of this on the good side with your manager, I got you. This is my superpower, okay? In addition to that, you can always email me your questions or concerns, comments, ask at trillmba.com. Listen, I'm happy to either answer your question or I'll connect you to the right person if I don't have the answer, okay? Now, again, that's trillmba.com slash coaching to schedule a 45 minute consultation with me to walk through your specific work situation or ask at trillmba.com to submit your question, concern, comment. Hey, all the things. And listen, guys, do me a favor. Whatever podcast, streaming service, listening, wherever you're listening, like, subscribe, write us a review. If this podcast has been helping you get through the everyday of managing your career, you've seen wins in your career because you've taken advice from this podcast, leave us a review. Let other people know. Like, don't keep this to y'all. I don't know why y'all trying to keep this show a secret. It's not. It's for everybody. Your coworker that you think is in competition with you, they're not. If they listen to the show, you're still going to get the job over them because you're just better than them. It's fine. And you're way ahead of the game. Do you know how much time, how many episodes they'd have to binge watch to catch up? They're not. So share with them. Be kind. Let them know that this resource is out there. Don't hoard this information for yourself. Okay? Okay. Now, next week, we have a very special guest. If you remember, I was on the Higher Learning Podcast with Van Lathan Jr. and Rachel Lynn Lindsay in April. So Van is coming on the show next week, guys. I am so excited. We are going to talk code switching. We're going to talk relationship building because Van has built so many great relationships. It's amazing. I'm like, okay, you got to hit me the gang. Like, what's your process? Because... I'm good at building relationships, but it's hard to build relationships in Hollywood. So he is a master at relationship building. He definitely is his black ass self. So he is definitely true. 
And we're gonna have a dope ass conversation about managing a career in an industry that is hard and feels like a pipe dream to a lot of people. But guess what, guys? Entertainment industry is full of big ass companies. <laughs> and they all operate the same. So if you've ever wanted to have a career in entertainment, but you don't know how to transition or you're trying to think through it, I think listening to Van's story, the courage he has had, the ups and downs, all the things, getting fired, all those things, all the things that we all go through, cannot wait for you guys to hear this conversation with him next Sunday. So come back here, same bad time, same bad channel. And I'm just super excited and grateful so it'll be fun. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I've kept my assistant here too long. It's late and uh, we hungry. So until next Sunday, guys, keep it true. The Trill NBA Show is a Fair World Corp LLC production. Executive produced by Felicia and Rose Inuha. Sound design and editing by Chris Mann with Pod Shaper. Theme music is Kick Push by Ryan Little. Keep it trill every day, y'all.